Welcome to the History Hunter. Welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. Do you know what all of this is? That is the Atlantic Wall. Me and Eagle Eyes, Eagle Eyes. we are here today to discover, explore and share great World War II material with you. So join us and let's go out and find that right now. Those of you who are not familiar, the Atlantic Wall is the fortification line that Germany built on direct order from Hitler. With the fortify, the coastline running from the top of Scandinavia to the bottom of France. And in that stretch of coastline, there are tens and thousands of structures. And on this very specific position, there was a huge artillery battery and I'm going to bet you haven't seen a couple of the things that we're going to show you here today. It was the German here, German army, around this place. And there was a ton of uh, um, gun placements here. They are out here, out in the sea or around the sea. At least they used to be in the dunes. Not anymore. But every uh, gun position need radars. Radar is to home in to the enemy and find out exactly where the enemy is coming from. And that is what this first feature is all about. This is the control center of a little, little tiny foundation, which is up there. And I'm going to show you both of them. But this thing here, you can see the sand is already starting to do work on this structure here. See the opening area is kind of covered with this half roof. That is a splinter schutz. So it's not just convenient to have a roof that the water doesn't come in, but it's actually to prevent splinters and bombs entering this structure. And why was that important on this structure? That is because here a lot of equipment was installed. There was also a generator room. There are just a couple of rooms here today on this side and then you come in on this side, they're very rough, you see here. Inside here, also just a very rough, let me do this, boom. It's just a very rough um, concrete room set up, but it has a special purpose. And the purpose of that, we will find on the top here. That little foundation up there, is what it was all about. Right there, one of the German radars, Freya. That was so important because by the antenna array and the radars, they could pinpoint with pretty high accuracy where the Allied were and where they were coming in from and which heading they had. And up on the top here, this is the only proof of the radar position. Today, nothing else than some concrete pieces. You know, when I'm at these positions, I always wonder 
how do the German soldiers find their way? Because you're gonna see absolutely greatness further down here. But you must remember that what we're going to show you didn't used to be as it is today. It was actually up here in the dunes. But Hans and Wilhelm and Friedrich, they were doing their duty here for the fatherland. How did they find their way in such a vast area where there are so many features that looks the same? Well, they had their own running trench system and that is the expressway of the German soldiers. And that is some places here very visible and at other places it is impossible to see or find. Now we're gonna walk down towards the beachhead, or the beach itself, but we're also gonna visit a very, very special bunker, which once upon a time, a German soldiers worked in and stayed in. I'm gonna show that later, further down on the beach. All right, so this is the Atlantic wall for sure. And all you can see here is the ocean, but this was one of the most important strategic positions that the Germans put their installments on. And there's a special reason for that. That is because the waterways out there, they had to control that to make sure that the Allies didn't have their convoys coming too close or being able to pass through a special area here. So that is why it is here. But there is also something else here, which I will show you. And you can see some of them over there. But we have a mission. We are here to find the bunker where a young German soldier served his duty. You're gonna see his picture, you're gonna see his name, and we are definitely gonna find it. So what is going on here? Well, that's a Regelbau 410, a huge foreign control bunker. Why is it canted, tilted, and laying like that? That's very simple to answer. This is the work of nature. And nature does this. Because all of the bunkers that we're gonna see now, they were like 15, 20 meters higher up. And just to illustrate, to see how things works, let me show you this. Up here, you have a VF-58C uh, machine gun Tobruk bunker, and it's almost completely sunken into the sand. And that's what's happening. These bunkers were flat. They were higher up, sand erosion, boom, pulls them down. And in the end, they will actually just totally disappear. So once upon a time, this was a grand, grand bunker from the, here's Kustenbutt battery of the army, German army gun battery. Today, it is just a sand-filled coloss laying slanted on its side. Once upon a time on the top there, there was a rangefinder position. Like this. I'm gonna stretch this thing and see if I can show it to you. As I said, this was the finest that the Germans could produce during those days. And now it's just laying there, waiting for its fate to be swallowed by the sea. But once upon a time, that was a massive piece of the German war machine and the Atlantic wall. In the 40s, there was a young man called Gerhard. He was actually serving here. And this is a picture of Gerhard when he was young. So Gerhard, he came to the Atlantic Wall fortification position and he served. And what was even more interesting is that he came back after the war as one of these bunkers were excavated and opened. People managed to find him 
and he actually went to the same bunker as he served in. And that is what we are here for. We are here to see if we can find that specific bunker that Gerhard served in. And I hope we can do that. So imagine all of this up at a flat plateau. This is L409A. That is a uh, anti-aircraft gun, most likely a flak position, because the battery bunkers with the gun, the gun bunkers are further up here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take you up here and we're gonna check this thing out from the top side. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you? In this manner and fashion here, by creating beautiful World War II dioramas and displays, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description, you can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with for your eyes only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff. And if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month. But now let's continue our little adventure. So this gun position is up there and you can see the sand constantly shifting. See how small the eagle eyes is? <laughs> the sand is constantly shifting, dragging and exposing and covering up this structure all the time. Wow, absolutely stunned to see these things because it's like Nature will reclaim everything, no matter what you do. It's impressive to see forces of nature do this. You can see here, this one is still rather high up in the dunes. But believe me, it's just a matter of time. This is the anti-aircraft gun position. This is where the flak crew would be. This is where persons like Gerhard would work. This is their workstation. And I promise you, in just a few years, this one will be on the lower level like this. It's not gonna move too much forward, maybe a little bit, but it was actually up here at this top level. And its journey down into the ocean has started. And God knows how many years it will take before it's completely gone. This is a FL 277. The footprint of this bunker would look something like this. And it's got this very special kind of tower on the side there. Makes it quite distinct. I'm not too sure whether this thing is actually accessible. But I'm gonna have a little look here and see if it's only filled with sand or if it's actually possible to go inside. I'm guessing it's full with, uh, filled with sand. Oh, what is going on? I can't see. I'm gonna bring a flashlight here. So we can actually see down there. Oh my goodness, if you want to, you could actually access down there. But I most likely won't, because this is treacherous land. And it's absolutely not recommended to do any stupid stunts because if you go down there and something happens people might not even know that you're there and then you're in big trouble what I want to convey with these images is the sheer size of this complex we've been walking now for over 20 minutes this way coming from all the way over there and this just continues and continues you can see that eagle eyes is actually sitting on top of a Freya radar suckle. And it just goes like two thirds further back there. So it's absolutely crazy. But we are getting close to our target. And that is the bunker that Gerhard used to serve. That is one of the uh, gun emplacements. That's a 671. And uh, it's very iconic, this front area here. I'm going to show you a picture of what that looks like with a gun inside. So 
that is basically what used to be here or is here. Look at the huge piece of that cast thing there. Something was here next to it. You can see how much rocks that are there, but not much rebars. The rebars are in the structure. But in here, there was a gun crew and they had one, one task and that was to follow the firing solution of the uh, fire and control bunker. And then when the order was given, boom, out there, the charge was sent. Could be a vessel, maybe a submarine, could even be an aircraft. Wow. So me and Eagle Eyes, we have come to what we think is Gerhard's work position. Which one is it? Not the first, not the second, but the third one. It's so it's Gerhard. not the first one, it's not this one, but Gerhard's workplace is round the corner of that one. Not the huge one, because that was the fire and control bunker. Okay, but Gerhard worked in a 501. That is actually a 501. So you have a 501 here, and on its flank, you have a 671. Uh, on the side of this 671, there should be a top rack, or at least a uh, machine gun position. And just around the corner here, that is where Gerhard served. And he went back here, as I said, and he revisited that bunker. And it's actually been recorded. That is fantastic to know. Another one of the iconic fronts of the uh, gun bunkers. Right behind this one. This is absolutely touching. This is absolutely emotional because I read up about this gentleman. And right there is Gerhard's work space. And to see the image of Gerhard and then to see some of the uh, original photos from this location makes you very humble to think that this gentleman was commanded, drafted, told to go somewhere far away from home. And his task was to stay inside that concrete thing no matter what. Blut und Ehre, German for blood and honor, never surrender and you do as you're told. And that is, that is powerful. So this is where Gerhard served and he actually survived the war and he came back. I want to see the entrance where Gerhard actually came into this workspace, if it's available. I'm not sure. All right, Gerhard, in memory of you, we came here. We saw your work position. It is completely filled with sand and it was ne next to the fire and control bunker. So this is absolutely correct. So this bunker, wow, I'm speechless. It's very personal when you get to know a story and we get to know what happened. And then you also realize that this gentleman was very, very lucky. He actually survived the war. He came back and he showed other people things from this. When this was falling down from the dunes, they actually opened it. They invited him here and he could tell so many stories and he can actually show you everything inside, what was where, how did it work, all of that. Oh, wow. Absolutely, very, very powerful story. So now 
We've seen a little bit of the Atlantic Wall. We've actually seen the bunker where a young German soldier worked. Gerhard, he survived the war. He came back and he thought a lot of people, a lot of things about the German Atlantic Wall. And we can convey that to you and hope you enjoyed it. We will definitely be back with more stories and more images. I want to say a massive thank you to our Patreon PayPal supporters for being out there for us. You are the guys and girls who makes this come true. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. From um, History Hunter Eagle Ice. and Eagle Eyes. He's busy with a lot of sticks and stuff, so he's been kind of out of the image here today, but I can promise you he is eager and willing to learn. And I hope you enjoy this little adventure. For all of you who subscribe, please comment, leave a thumbs up, all of that good stuff to help us out. In the meantime, stay safe, keep smiling, and remember, history is everywhere.